and explain about this whole Hassanad thing because I had inside information. Um, and and um, a lot of you might have guessed what the inside information is. It's one of the girls that was working with him. Um, her name is Ray. Um, to confirm that she knows what she's talking about, you guys might have seen her mentioned in the Muslim Daily Guys post, um, you know, explaining like one quarter of like everything that's happened. But um, that's where I've gotten all my information from. I had like an hour and a half long conversation. Um, we were even going to record a video together for her to kind of explain it from her side. But I think we, I mean, yeah, we kind of decided against it because I already had the information and there was no point in delaying it any further because everything was coming out. So I started posting shit of him in the hospital. So I thought, let's just explain it. Okay, to first explain how Raisa Ray got involved with Hassanat. It was back when he first had a scandal, basically slid into her DMs. Um, as he does um, and he kind of offered her work it's important to know that this was not on a it's not, wasn't a romantic relationship it was on a work basis and obviously like, like the girl herself she's a 19 year old girl like she is somewhat like naive um, and I can't imagine a lot of girls would kind of like give up the chance to kind of work and make money um, you know at that age and he was offering her basically that the work that he offered her was basically via Airbnb. So what he would do, the work, this is how he was making his money. The majority of his money wasn't, by the way, through Rookers. Um, well, I don't know, not the majority anyways. Um, what he would do is he would get leases and he would rent them out on B&B. The apartments are not his. He doesn't own shit. Apparently he's broke as fuck. Like, literally broke. Broke ass. Um, the charity money he does not have. It has been apparently seized and frozen by the charity commission the other thing to note is that this guy he had terrorism charges on him at some point so he has to always notify the police where he is where he's residing and he couldn't put the leases in his name so he kind of got these girls and kind of like groomed them in a professional manner and kind of offered them like oh we'll put this flat in your hat in your name and blah 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 kind of thing and obviously girls are a bit like not kind of like clued on with the whole like that to them it would seem like a, a good idea because it just sounds like oh i'm getting an apartment put in my name like what's where's the loss i can build up my credit etc blah blah so what he did was he put the apartments in you know several girls names and he obviously entrusted these girls with like information like passwords and things like that he's got billions of accounts like so many so the first thing you're probably wondering is how does the atheist video is that legit that video is fake all right that video is completely fake um and he's the one that planted it um by messaging ray herself and her sister and they, he kind of basically said oh post this up he didn't want anyone to know that he was planting it and that was well, he didn't the mistake he made he didn't make that clear so obviously when i got sent it i was like oh hassan had sent me this he said like he just basically okay so the reason he wanted to plant this video why the reason why was he wanted to plant it on justice for islam justice for islam previously had been his biggest hater although it was his account right so he wanted that to control the narrative so when he posted it um on justice for islam page and then he posts the full video on his page of like, that's what you want me to say, the, you know, the rest of it that says, I'm not an atheist, I'm 100% Muslim. Then Justice for Islam, who's him, but he, he thinks no one knows it's him, would then turn around and be like, oh, we were mistaken, blah, 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 blah. And kind of like, because it's got like over 100,000 followers and kind of like move the narrative to make him into a bit of a victim so that he can start rebuilding things with you know, Sara and kind of rebuild that like kind of thing. And the reason why he wants to rebuild it is this. So how, before I get to that, how why, why he wants to plant it is, how does Sara go back to him? We saw obviously before videos of Sara saying, never gonna go back to him, crying. Sara apparently, um, you know, is a, she's not an evil person. She, she's not innocent, but she's a bit like, she's not well. Okay, if you can say it in better words, she's not well. Um, and what 
Hassan did. He basically threatened her family with releasing videos um, and things that would kind of put them in, basically exposed them. So when Sara first left, her family put a restraining order on her and the baby. The baby wasn't born yet at the time. She gave birth to the baby in December. So obviously the baby, Hasnat wasn't allowed anywhere near the baby and social services were involved. So when she ran away to, in, a, in essence, at the start to protect her family, um, she had to, it was, it became a missing person report. Like everyone feared for like Sarah's safety because she had the baby with her. No one knew where they were. Like they were basically on the run. So um, in order to kind of, um, in the beginning, so she went back for those reasons, but slowly he kept kind of whispering in her ear, sweet nothings, etc. And she kind of began to be more on his side. Um, I don't know how, but she did. Obviously, now they were on the run because she wasn't allowed, she's a missing person. And if they found them, they would take the baby away from her. Um, and all hell would break loose. Um, is it all hell? Would anyway, so they made out they got people in Mauritius to log into their account and they start they had to, he had the one person one in Mauritius posting like there was a video once that they posted a live video of, of them in Mauritius not them but it was like of Mauritius they did that to kind of throw the scent off what where they actually were they were actually in the apartments in like in between the apartments kind of thing like basically on the run so they had people posting things from Mauritius and that was all a distraction for um, social services because to say that we were out, they were out of the country and they wanted to sort of gain sort of the public supports from social media to be able to help them to kind of flee the country um, because that was the only way he explained to Sarah that was the only way that she can keep her baby. So and to the point that he wanted, he what they were going to do was use another mother and baby's passport to get her out. Um, so in the meantime, loads of people were logging to Sarah's account from Mauritius, from like Leicester, from Manchester, everywhere, just to kind of take them off the scent. And that's why, um, you know, Roxana, um Abdullah, got the visit from them, um, trying to find Sarah, because obviously Sarah's a missing person. And you guys might have seen the post of Omar Abdullah saying oh I got people like knocking my doors trying to find you blah blah whilst you're on your second honeymoon etc so it's appeared that because of all of these like these loggings that they were doing these posts it appeared to social services and like the police that they were out of the country so the so like basically the police thought that Sarah was it was like a high kind of priority case because they thought they actually feared that she was dead and that's why they kept kind of looking for her going to like different places but all this all the while Sarah and Hassanat and the baby had been hiding in East London in between the flats they have leases on so um the the situation with them is they were never allowed they had a lot of people that kind of like coming to search the apartments so obviously what did they do to kind of not be found every time the police would come they would run into the balcony and kind of go over so Salah would go over then Hassanat would pass her the baby and Hassanat would jump over and as such someone else had to always be in the apartment to stop them being found so what during this whole time um, Hassanat was getting very ill. His digestive system was failing and he couldn't go to the hospital. So it just got worse and worse. So he kept throwing up everything that he was taking, eating, sorry, consuming. He kept throwing up acid, like he was getting really, really bad. Um, but again, they couldn't go to the hospital because if they did, then they'll find him, they'll find Sarah, they'll take the baby. Okay, so he's gotten to the point that he's so ill at one point that recently, this was last week, that he started having a heart attack. Like he was practically on his last breath. So Ray was there and she didn't know what to do because the guy needs like urgent 
medical care like he's literally having a heart attack dying Hassanat so he says call the ambulance Sarah is saying no don't they're gonna take my baby so Ray was st basically stuck in the middle not knowing what to do because Sarah's saying don't call them they're gonna take my baby Hassan's like I'm dying call them so it's like a bit of back and forth in the end um Sarah went and hid and took the baby and hid and um Ray basically called the ambulance for Hassanat literally within moments what felt like moments apparently the door was literally um so the door was broken down and literally everyone was there police MI5 terrorism um everybody was there and they came and they, they basically saw that Hassanat was there and now that they found Hassanat they're like they did like a proper in-depth search of the whole place and they ended up finding Sarah and the baby. So obviously because of Hassanah's situation, they couldn't take him to the cell, they had to take him to the hospital. And that's where he's been uploading those videos. But with regards to Sarah, they took her baby um, and that's like a completely different situation now in limbo that, you know, we don't know about like what's happening with that, but they have taken her baby. But with regards to Hassanat, he's now basically, I think he's on bail. He's, he's due to leave the hospital very soon, if not already left. But he's got like, a, he's got a hearing coming up now. Um, and the reason they were able to arrest him was based on the fact that, because you know that the police have to have like a legitimate reason to arrest him. The reason that they, they've put to arrest him is the fact that he, because he's been involved in terrorist activities previously, he has to always notify when he moves and where he's living and they basically arrested him on that basis because he hasn't because he's in this place in this location and he hasn't so so that's really basically the case um as it stands this is as of last week so just to kind of clear up a lot of like questions everyone has and stuff with regards to the charity money apparently he has not stolen it like i said apparently he's broke as fuck like he's really really broke like he is not living like someone who has charity money. Charity money has been confirmed as frozen by the Charity Commission. That's one thing. Second thing, the atheism. Yes, the video was a fake. He planted it because he wanted to change the narrative and show that actually he's not atheist. He is 100% not Muslim. Um, confirmed like 1000%. The, the reason being is he, he's apparently not a dumb guy. He studied all religions he believes out of all religions islam is the most kind of like likely to be right but he doesn't believe in it he thinks it's not logical he thinks islam is not logical and he does not he does not consider himself a muslim basically another thing he's done is because he's put all these leases of these apartments that he was making money on through airbnb he's put them in other people's names he hasn't actually been paying the, those rents for months and months and months um so a massive kind of he's put massive debts on these people's names um, and he's been taking the money for himself um, which obviously isn't ideal for those people that trusted him and also something I didn't know apparently the whole scandal last year how it started was his ex-wife not Roxana um, a girl called Sultana she's the one that basically exposed Roxana as having that double life. And what he did in retaliation is he put snakes in her letterbox. Snakes. Snake, I don't know if it's plural, snake or snakes, it doesn't matter. Even one snake is fucking bad enough. So to kind of say you're a snake, that's what he did. So he's not really a great person regardless, but he, is, he was dying. I don't know, like based on the operation video, that he's shown but basically there was a hole in his digestive system that was the whole thing but i don't know if that's completely cured now or whatever but it seems to have been but not a great person still so before anyone starts to feel sorry for him you don't need to okay and finally to explain like why the this girl has um access to his accounts obviously she's working with him so he kind of she was privy to all his passwords so for her uh, at the end, this is at the end, she hasn't really been in charge of the account or anything like that. At the end, she basically took control of the account, changed the passwords, everything, 
because for her it was her insurance because obviously after what he did to Sultana there's no kind of telling what he can do especially when he's off on bail um so yeah like, kind of everyone's really getting restraining orders throughout this point from him because no one really knows what he's capable of so that's where it is now and he's got like I said court coming up but yeah I hope that's cleared up like some bits of information um that was missing but um but yeah they they weren't in Mauritius Sal didn't really go back willingly but in the end it was kind of manipulated it's all, it's all just been manipulation after manipulation. Like he's been manipulating a lot of people. Apparently Sala, like I said, isn't a bad person, but she's just not very bright in that sense and very easily manipulated. Roxana apparently is a different story. She's not really the best person. Um, but yeah, that's it. That is it. Like really, we shouldn't have any more questions about his situation, really. I think the only thing that can come out is what his sentence is and I don't know if it's going to be anything special because at the end of the day they arrested him on the basis that he just moved without giving them his address so I don't know how long they can keep him for that reason but or what they can sentence him for that but but yeah he's still gonna probably pop on our screens and try and like change the narrative again just see past it, be smarter, innit? <laughs> no one should have any feelings towards the